While I understand the appeal of playing racing games, and especially realistic sim racers, I tend to gravitate more towards the arcade racers. When I played a racing game, I wasn't looking for realism. I wanted a great sense of speed and action. I found this to be a fun way to experience over-the-top chase sequences and scenes from some of my favorite films. There's always a great sense of satisfaction when you're going very fast. You feel powerful and unstoppable, but at the same time, that power can be hard to control. All of this factors into why I wanted to try Onrush. Onrush is a new arcade racer by Codemasters and prioritizes fun over realism. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you my review for Onrush. most racing games, your goal is to complete the laps before your opponents and hopefully end in first place. Onrush is a little bit different than that as it focuses on objectives within a race rather than just being first. Onrush is composed of four different race types, Countdown, Lockdown, Switch, and Overdrive. Countdown focuses on having you essentially race in a time trial against the opposing team. You'll need to go through green gates to earn more time. Your goal is to keep your remaining time higher than the opposing team. You'll want to focus on taking out other drivers as well, since a crashed driver can't hit the gates and then net more time for their team. Lockdown is a king of the hill type mode where both teams fight to control this moving area. Capture enough areas and your team wins. This can be really fun to battle other players as you're trying to take control of that area. Switch has the player hunting down the enemy team and trying to take them out. Each time you are taken out, you'll need to spawn as a different vehicle. As you continue to die, the vehicles you spawn as get stronger and stronger. Overdrive is all about boosting. Boosting contributes to your score. You'll want to take out enemies and make jumps to gain more boost. Gain enough and you can launch a rush move that will send you charging forward and can give you major points for your team along with taking out enemies. The four modes do bring some fun variety. I found myself falling in love with Overdrive as it is the most accessible and I like its focus on speed. Countdown can be rather intense, especially when you're playing the game online. While I do like that Onrush focus on doing something different by not focusing on regular racing for any of its modes, I do hope that they patch the game in the future with a traditional race option, and maybe other creative objective-based modes. Another thing that separates Onrush from other racing games is its focus on playing as a team. Each of the modes I mentioned are all team-based. In most games, they focus on your own success, and here you are continually contributing to the success of the team. Since most of the modes are point-based and not based on being being in first place, you feel like you're still contributing and winning even if you're not the best driver. Though being within the top three for a race does show where you need to improve your skill and better on your opponents, with Onrush you'll work with your team to maximize points as each of the different cars have different passive buffs that provide you with more speed. Some allow you to gain more speed from jumps or drive closer to enemies and then you'll get speed that way. Some cars are better for taking down enemies. If you want to focus on speed, you can focus purely on the motorcycle cycles and just dodge all the cars. These four modes are featured in the campaign, online, and custom matches. You can play the campaign missions in online co-op if you want to. I didn't experience long wait times for playing the game online and mostly found it to be a smooth experience. I do like the visuals and mostly great performance to the game. The visuals are colorful while not super detailed and I think this plays into the game having a good performance overall. There were a few noticeable small instances where the game had a minor half second stutter, but that was about it. Noticeable and annoying, but it wasn't detrimental to the fun of the game. While I did like that Onrush allowed you to play co-op online, I feel like the game would have been perfect for local split screen play. Even if the engine could not handle the preferred four player split screen, I would have loved to just see two player split screen within this game. And this would work well with the game since it's all about being on a team and teamwork. The developers have commented about 
about this, and while I do love to see split screen and I would love to see it in the game, I don't think it's going to happen, but I'm going to hope anyway. As you play the game, you'll gain experience for various activities and challenges. These factor into you unlocking different loot boxes for different cosmetic items. Though the game does have loot boxes, there are no microtransactions within the game. Though that could change with a patch, I hope it doesn't. The new skins are fun to unlock along with having that XP system, but when you play the game with no internet connection, you can play the campaign but you won't be able to earn anything. I wish they hadn't done this. I would think that they essentially made the game always online for balancing and with unlocking items, but since most of the unlocks are just cosmetic, I don't really understand why you can't unlock stuff offline. I wanted to mention this here for the people that don't have a consistent and stable connection. I wanted to take a few minutes to discuss the developers of Onrush. A friend of mine informed me about the team that made Onrush. I didn't realize that this was made by the Evolution Studios team. If that name sounds familiar, it's because they are best known for the MotorStorm series and Drive Club. In March 2016, Sony shut down the developer. Many articles pointed to Sony's disappointment with the reception of Drive Club as the reason for this. I haven't tried it, so I can't speak to the quality of the game, but I do know that it does have its fans. While March of 2016 did not have good news for Evolution, the following April was much better better for them. Codemasters acquired Evolution Studios. Codemasters is no stranger to racing games, so this seemed like a perfect fit and a great opportunity to share knowledge and experience between the current and new staff. I had the pleasure to play the second MotorStorm when it was originally released, and it was and is a fun experience, and my kind of racer. There are some similarities between MotorStorm and Onrush. The most obvious ones are those vehicle classes that you saw in both of the games, and the awesome motorcycles. Both games have a great sense of speed and deliver on that high-octane action. It is great to learn that Evolution Studios was given another opportunity to continue to make racers and build on their craft. Overall, I like what the Evolution team has done here with Onrush. Onrush takes a unique approach to its arcade racing roots and attempts to change things up by having the players focus on objectives. By focusing on objectives, the game inherently encourages teamwork as each player must work with their team to win the match. While the matches can be chaotic, there is a great rush that comes over the player while racing and upon obtaining that victory. The four modes, Countdown, Lockdown, Switch, and Overdrive, bring enough variation to keep the matches feeling different enough from each other other, while also making you wonder about additional objective-based modes the developer may cook up for additional content or a sequel. It's great to see Evolution get a second chance to make a new racer for the current generation. And Onrush is a fun racer that helps fill that void left by the summer months as we wait for many of the major releases this fall. If you have some friends and you're looking for a new game to play, then I'd recommend you check this one out. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out some of my other ones. If you'd like to help support the channel, check out my Patreon links at the end of this video and the description down below. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.